Good morning. This is Randy Sapper with Rast Track Incorporated in Austin, Texas. We'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to allow us to introduce Rast Track's map marker solution for snow plow, street cleaning, and sanitation operations. We will try to hold this webinar to 35 minutes, and at the conclusion, we will hold a brief Q&A for those who would like to hold on for a few more minutes. So at this time, I would like to turn things over to our map marker specialist, Javier O.T. Hey, how you doing? I'm Javier. I've been with the company here in my 12th year. And, uh, you know, again, thank you for being available uh, so that we can talk about something that's all our, on our minds, the snowplow season. Uh, now, I just want to go over a few things. Uh, during the webinar, uh, you can feel free to send any questions you might have over to sales or uh, We're going to be on standby uh, to take a look at whatever's coming in. Uh, one thing that will help us is for you to include your phone number so that we can give you a call back. Uh, obviously, some questions might require a bit more time to answer, so uh, we're going to try to uh, get to you as soon as possible. And as Randy had mentioned, you know, we, we understand that everybody's busy, uh, so we're going to try to keep it to 30, 35 minutes or so forth. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to leave this uh, con contact screen up at the end of the webinar and, and also have that uh, Q&A session at that time. Uh, but again, uh, the reason we're all here is because we have uh, something on our mind, uh, the snow season. Right now, I don't think that there's any real big snowstorms going on, but there have been some this season. And, and uh, any time there's snowstorms during the snow season, that poses great challenges to us. Uh, especially when those storms are prolonged. We know that uh, in a very short time, storms can cause massive pile-ups up, pile of snow. And that's something that can be dangerous uh, for all of the citizens in our service area. Uh, I know that uh, we've been working with a lot of municipalities uh, with, regarding these challenges. And uh, one thing that everybody tells us is that they have a limited number of, of plows. Uh, I mean, that just because of budgeting reasons, uh, we all understand this, but uh, that means that you have to make sacrifices when you uh, service an area or that you have to have prolonged hours for your operators. Um, and so that requires uh, for us to be able to look at a situation and try to uh, systematically uh, cover the areas uh, that we service. And now, obviously, uh, snow is heavy. So you can't just give it one pass. You sometimes have to go multiple passes on a street uh, in order for you to really be able to clear that street up and make it available for any type of traffic. Also, uh, we know that uh, others have told us that uh, you need a balanced attack. You can't just focus on one area. There's a lot of neighborhoods that have to get taken care of. And so these are just a number of the challenges that we are facing uh, whenever snow season comes around. You know this, and uh, perhaps you can even add to this list. Uh, the bottom line is that we need to be able to optimize our fleet to be able to efficiently take care of any snow issues that we might have. Now, one of the things that uh, we've been able to do for uh, people like the City of New York is be able to provide them with a snow plow solution. Um, a lot of what we do is a, a map overview. Uh, so we're familiar with Google. Uh, Google gives you a nice traffic view. You're able to see green whenever there's free-flowing traffic, all the way to red whenever there's major congestion. In much the same way, that's exactly what we provide on the map so that you can see what is being addressed in the neighborhoods that you have to service. And, uh, this coverage that we're providing is something that's on a color-coded active aging map. And we do colors like green, blue, yellow, orange, purple, and red. And, and you can see that uh, we've defined these colors to mean something. For example, green, uh, we know that within the last hour there's been uh, some snow plow that's been able to clear that street. And of course, uh, the hours start escalating all the way to red, which is something that needs to be addressed quickly. Uh, red means it hasn't been plowed, or it could also mean that it hasn't been plowed within the last 24 hours. One of the great things about our solution is, is that it's fully customizable. Uh, we take a look at coverage areas. In other words, municipalities of different sorts are only going to cover a certain area, 
uh, because those are the areas they're responsible for. Well, we're not going to show you everything that's going on all over the continent of the United States. We're going to focus on on the areas that you are responsible for. And as you had noticed before, we had a color code scheme. Well, that color code isn't something that's set in stone. Uh, a lot of the times what we're looking for is for colors that pop, something that you can uh, easily see on the map, something that, uh, that tells you right away whether or not something's been taken care of or whether or not a service area needs to be addressed immediately and serviced. Uh, another thing that we're also looking at is plow position. Uh, there are a lot of companies that have told us, and municipalities that have told us, they want to know when that plow is engaged or disengaged uh, so that they know that the street is actually being plowed. That's one of the things that we do. Uh, we have some things that we're going to talk about that uh, will allow you to see plow position. Now, not everybody has just a plow. Uh, a lot of people have spreaders as well. Obviously, you want to salt the roads. Uh, so that you can ensure that uh, your ice doesn't build up uh, so that there's a safety, uh, safe driving conditions. And we do this for any size fleet. Uh, this is something that uh, we can do for somebody that has just a handful of plows to somebody that has a whole fleet, a big fleet. Uh, sometimes some people tell us, well, I've got a small uh, amount of plows. I really don't need this. But the fact is that uh, the smaller amount of plows you have, the more efficient you have to be. So you need tools like these to be able to have a solution that's going to help you uh, to make uh, the most efficient use of the plows that you do have. So that's something that we're trying to emphasize. Now, this is a feature-rich system. Uh, this system is something that can show you many different things. Uh, take, for example, the following situation. You have plows going out there, and maybe one of your plows goes down. And now it's, it's not in operation, but it's out in the field. Well, because you've already been working in the neighborhoods, you're able to see what the best way to arrive at that down plow is. So you're able to know that I need to go through certain neighborhoods to arrive at that plow. You have location, you have clear path. That's something very important to many, especially because when these plows are out there, we're talking about urgent conditions, uh, things that have to happen at that moment. Uh, to ensure the safety of all of the citizens in your operating area. Obviously, uh, during this time of the year, uh, snow plows, uh, they're engaged uh, in quite frequent activity, and that means that there's uh, some possibility of, of uh, all of the parts wearing down, and we need to be able to do preventative maintenance on that. As these are in operation, uh, we're able to see how long they've been in operation, maybe engine hours and things like that, and we can set up different timers in the system to give you uh, a nice record of when maybe you've greased, lubed, or done a hydraulic check on your snow plows. In addition to that, we're able to take a look at all the geofences uh, in the area, or rather we're identifying regions. For example, you could draw a, uh, a region around a certain neighborhood, and that's something that allows you to be able to determine whether or not that uh, neighborhood has been addressed. Now, one thing that I have not added on here that actually has been asked of us before is that sometimes during normal operations, uh, maybe your, your plow uh, reaches an area where there's a, a, a tree that's blocking uh, a certain area. Maybe there's some form of obstacle there. And some have said, hey, I, I need something where I can press a button so that then I can identify that point on my map. Well, that's something that, uh, that we've recently added uh, as part of a wish list item. Uh, we're doing that uh, for a certain municipality uh, that needs that, and I think that's something that probably a lot of municipalities need. It's an event button. It's very simple. It's in um, close to the control uh, console. You would simply press that button, and we would know uh, to mark that area of the map as an obstacle or, or something that needs to be addressed. Somebody needs to go and cut that tree out. Uh, move it or something to that degree. Uh, one of the other things that I'd like to mention is that our system is extremely versatile. Um, obviously, we're here to talk about snow plows because we're worried uh, during this snow season uh, that we got to do our job and make sure that the neighborhoods are safe. But there's so many other things that we can apply this to. Just to name a few, there are some that have asked us to help us help them with their cleaning, uh, street sweeping. And so we're able to, in the same way as we would uh, mark the roads 
regarding snowplow activity, we're able to mark the roads regarding street sweeping activity so that you know that any areas that you've swept have been serviced. Now, some might tell me, well, uh, the thing is that I don't do roads, I do parking lots. One of the things that you should know is that this is not only to mark roads, we can mark regions, and we can also give you points on the map that have been serviced. So it's both by road, roadways, by regions or geofences, and also by points visited. Uh, we can show you what has been serviced or what is not. And this also uh, can then apply into refuse or brush pickup. Obviously, garbage collecting is something that's extremely important. We've all been there where we know that somebody says, hey, you didn't pick up my garbage. But now with the system, you're able to see and show that, hey, yes, we did. We arrived at a certain time, and uh, simply there was no garbage uh, outside. The rest of the neighborhood got taken care of. And then you can uh, uh, show compliance as far as uh, the different services that you're rendering unto the neighborhood. Uh, some use this for police or security patrols, extremely important. Uh, they're on, um, I guess, situations that are life and death situations, and these require us to be able to monitor them and be able to determine whether or not uh, you know, there is safety in that area. And of course, one of the things that I really love about the system is that you can put in general maintenance or inspections. Uh, so you tell Rastrack, I, I do uh, oil changes every so often, and once you've uh, performed that oil change, you let Rastrack know, the counter's reset, and then you're going to get an SMS text message or email the next time that that needs to be taken care of. Uh, so, I mean, that kind of tells you a little bit about uh, what we do, uh, but I know that you're all asking the same question, well, what does this look like? And I'd like to jump into the interface at this point in time. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open up my web browser uh, to that screen. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and show us uh, what, what that looks like. This is, this is what our console looks like. It's very simple. Uh, over on the left-hand side, you're going to see uh, a vehicle list, a few more options up here. Uh, up in this area, you see a table. And then, of course, in this area, you see a map with vehicles. Uh, these vehicles uh, are part of a fleet. You'll notice that in this fleet, I got quite a few. There's a really big list in there. You can always filter those out so that you can uh, see very specific vehicles. If you want to see the, uh, something that shows you all of the fleet, well, here I'm showing you I've got uh, over 106 items on the screen. I'm going to focus in on one of them. I'm going to focus in on this vehicle that's 9999. You'll notice that he's uh, here on uh, Pulaski Highway. And uh, up over here, you're going to notice uh, Pulaski Highway right here for some. Uh, this specific vehicle, when I click on that red dot, gives me some more details. I'm able to see, among other things, the time and address. But you'll notice that in the inputs area, I'm actually showing that uh, this vehicle right now has the ignition on and the plow is down. And he's traveling, uh, in this case, at 55 miles per hour. I will let you know that this specific vehicle is a demonstration vehicle. Uh, so, uh, right here, you're able to see that vehicle on the map. Now, I'm going to show you what the actual snowplow uh, solution looks like. I'm going to go to Map Options, and over here, you'll notice that I have a section called Map Layers. And it, right under Map Layers, I have this section called Snowplow Removal Progress. So, I'm going to go ahead and click on this guy right here that says Plowed. And you'll notice that now some of the streets are highlighted green. Uh, those are areas that have been plowed and you'll notice my vehicle's on there. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see a little bit more about what's been plowed. Now you're starting to see some different colors. Uh, obviously, as I had mentioned before, we're able to determine when a street's been plowed. Uh, that color coding is available right here, and you'll notice that the green means that it's been plowed in the last hour, and you'll notice that the next color blue is plowed within the last one to three hours. So. What that tells us is that there are plows out there that are working that are plowing the streets. Now, when I click on not plowed, now you're going to see that there are a lot of areas here that have not been plowed. Again, this is a demonstration, uh, so you, this kind of tells you uh, that there's areas that need to be addressed. 
And so as a fleet operator, you can start uh, addressing these areas by telling your different operators, snowplow operators, to go out into these respective neighborhoods to be able to service those areas. Now, I want to emphasize one thing. The color coding that you're seeing here is not set in stone. This is configurable. Uh, we like for the, for the colors to pop. A lot of what we're looking at right now, uh, we've based these colors off of what others have told us. It does not have to stay that way. You don't need all these different amounts. You can have three color resolutions or you can have more. Uh, for right now, we feel that this is probably the most efficient way to show everything. Uh, between one hour, one to three, three to six, six to 12, 12 to 24, and red not plowed or over 24. One of the things that I'll, I'll uh, address also is that when we're color coding these areas, what we're looking for is for a report within that roadway. Now, the way that maps work is that they are segments. So I'm gonna show you something interesting Right here in this area, you're going to notice that there's a green, there's a red, and there's more green. What that means is that there's several segments in here that are defined in the map configuration. And now in this very small segment, we did not receive a report. Most of the time, the segments are long enough where our resolution serves its purpose. However, this is designed so that you can see that we need to be able to update within a segment so that we can then uh, use the parameters that are located in this legend to color code it with the right uh, color. Uh, this, this area right here, you'll notice how those segments appear. I'm zooming in. So you see you have segments that are within there, and then you have this segment over here. So it's not just a straight line that runs forever. It, there's segments that create those roads in uh, the map uh, configuration. Now, another thing that I, I'd like to draw out or, or rather emphasize is that here, these areas are green, and then over here you have these areas as, as blue. So. What we're also looking for to be able to correctly color code an area is we're looking for revisits. In other words, the snowplow is going to go out, it's going to do its job, but there will be times where it's going to go back and it's going to service that road once again. As that happens, essentially we're resetting back to these different uh, parts of the legend. So a revisit will take us back to green, but as it ages, we're going to end up seeing blue, yellow, orange, purple, and ultimately red. That is, uh, again, what we're calling aging. Now, it does not have to uh, be just in this configuration. Some people might want it to be every four hours that we're looking for a revisit. Whatever you might want it to be, uh, we're looking for customizing that uh, to your uh, specifications. Another, another thing that uh, some have asked us, is, well, how do you know what area you have to paint? A lot of municipalities, they have uh, public maps. These public maps are available to allow us to know what the service area is of that specific municipality. I'm going to zoom out some so that you can kind of see uh, this specific uh, working area. You'll notice uh, that it, it, uh, it's all in this area that's, that's red. So, it's a really large service area. This one specifically is for uh, Cecil County over in Maryland. And we don't have to paint the whole United States. We will only paint or show the color code for the area that you're working. And again, that's off of the uh, information that you provide in uh, your public maps. One of the things that I'd also like to bring out is uh, the resolution as far as the track goes. I'm going to go ahead and show you a little bit about what the track looks like. I'm going to choose that same vehicle that I've been working with, and I'm going to look at the uh, track for today. And you'll notice uh, what we like to put in there as far as the resolution is concerned. Uh, we have quite a bit of updates. You'll notice that right here. And uh, th this one in particular, I'm going to show you a little playback so that you can kind of see uh, what, what this one has been doing. And you'll notice that it's traveling there. 
Uh, this, this is something that allows us to understand uh, update rates or cadence and also how it's servicing an area. Uh, you're always able to take a look at that history. The history is extremely important because uh, not only do you want to see what's going on now, you, you also want to understand how an area has been serviced so that you can make any tweaks that are necessary uh, in the way that these areas are serviced so that you can you know, ensure that everything's being done in the most efficient way possible. And so you see that playback going on right there, uh, how it started, how it ended, and that shows you how an area was serviced. I'm going to go back over here, and now I'm going to show you uh, the plowed. And you'll notice that essentially where it worked, it's green. Now some areas have already started aging. They're already in the blue. As this tells you a lot about how this system works. So another thing that I'd like to mention, going back into one of the things that uh, we had looked at before, uh, again, we have uh, the option to do uh, maintenance. Uh, this shows you oil changes. You can do state inspections, uh, maybe some servicing of the snow plows, and Rastrec can automate those uh, situations for you so that you can have an extra tool that helps you understand it's time to service my vehicles, and then that resets, and it goes back into a counter that then reminds you again at the specified time. Now, I'm going to go back over to my presentation, and uh, one of the things that, that I'd like to do is kind of go over the, the different things that I had talked about just to ensure that we understand how that all that worked. Uh, we do color coding. It's, it's not default uh, where you cannot change it. It is configurable. The colors that we saw, uh, those are the ones that we like. They are there by default. But if you like other colors, uh, you just tell us, and we can go ahead and customize that for you. We have to look at segments. Maps are configured in line segments, and we have to have an update in that segment so that we can consider that it's been serviced. We do aging. That's where it goes from green to blue to yellow and so forth. And we like to see when roads are revisited so that we can keep going back to green. And we use the maps that you have so that we know what areas uh, to paint. Now, one of the things that I'd also like to emphasize is that we're very interested in having a successful deployment. Now, we've been able to successfully work with the City of New York to, so that they have everything that they need. But some of the things that we've gone over, I'd like to go over with you. Uh, because w one of the things that we need to know is what kind of plows you have. We need to understand this so that we can install these correctly. Uh, sometimes uh, some can work with contact-based systems uh, because we're, we're doing a hydraulic system maybe. Others maybe with switched if it's an electrical system. But most of the time we're looking at hydraulic systems and we're adding a sensor that allows us to be able to see whether or not that plow is up or down. Now, if you are not interested uh, of the plow being up or down, we don't have to do that uh, kind of install. We simply add a device that allows us to see activity, and then we're able to show you snow plow uh, activity and how you're working uh, the areas that you need to service. Now, another thing that we like to review is the conditions you require uh, for the labels. I know that a lot of what you had seen shows you what do we do for green, red, and so forth. Uh, well, if you have something very specific, then those are the things that we'd like to uh, know about. I'll give you an example of how New York is doing this. They're telling us they don't need to know when the snow plow is up or when the snow plow is down. All they need to know is whenever an area is being serviced, we consider that the snow plow is out there, it's running the streets, we know it's working. If that's, if that's enough, then we can make it so that it's like New York. And also, a lot of you have your own mapping. We'll have to work with your GIS guy to ensure that we have the mapping that we need and that that mapping we use to be able to show you the snow plow activity in your area of the world. Now, one of the things that we get asked about a lot is pricing. Uh, because you're concerned about budgets and, and you want to see if that falls within the budget. We want to 
bring out something that uh, we've been able to do with many municipalities. But there are existing contracts that we work with. For example, Unicom Government, uh, they have a contract called U.S. Communities. But there's so many other contracts out there that work with government entities uh, where uh, basically we are identified as a service and uh, we provide something that's subscription-based. So the reason I mention that is because that means that you don't have to go through a bid process. It's, it's essentially just taking advantage of the contract that already exists. We go and provide that through these contracts, and then you're just paying for it as a monthly subscription. That's something that's uh, helped out so many municipalities, and it's something that we know can help you out as well. So we've got over a lot of things today, and uh, one of the things that uh, one of the things that uh, I'd like to uh, let you know is that as far as next steps are concerned, you know, yes, we can receive questions at sales at rastrack.com. We've got a phone number that you can call. Um, pricing, we're going to deal with pricing on a one-on-one -on -one basis because every single fleet is different and we want to make sure that we price things out fairly and according to your fleet. And obviously that's going to take into account areas of operation and budget considerations. Um, so at this point in time, I'm going to unmute, uh, and if we have any questions whatsoever, then feel free to, uh, to ask. In addition to that, I'd like you to know that we're going to keep this screen up uh, probably for the next 15 to 30 minutes uh, or so. Uh, so that if you want, you can get back to your activities and maybe just send in an email to salesatrastrack.com or call us later at our uh, toll-free number. Um, I, I don't know, uh, Randy, if you want to maybe express thanks to those that might sure. leave. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and unmute at this point. Again, the thank conference you guys has for been taking unmuted. the time to visit with us. And uh, we want to open up the floor now for any questions that you might have. Is there anyone out there with a question? 